Veronica is one of the many amazing companions in Fallout New Vegas and is many people's favourite and for good reason, which I'll get into. But first I'll be discussing our own story before getting into our interactions with Courier 6. Along with essentially every other member of the Brothers of Steel, Veronica was born into the secretive group. Her father was a paladin, a high-ranked and respected position, and her mother a scribe. Unfortunately though, however, both her mother and father were killed by the NCR during the Brotherhood NCR War, which devastated both factions. This left Veronica an orphan and without her family besides her power armour, clad in emotionally cold peers. Thankfully though, Father Elijah would take the young girl under his wing, teaching her personally and eventually becoming something akin to a father figure to the girl and would help hone her natural skills. Since she was a baby, Veronica showed an aptitude for engineering which caused her to follow in her mother's footsteps, becoming a scribe. Thanks to her natural skills and Elijah's tutoring, she became something of an engineering prodigy within the Brotherhood. Her skill was incredible and due to being around Elijah for so long, his genius rubbed off on her. Elijah passed another thing up to Veronica as well, that being his disdain for authority. This was due to Elijah constantly being at odds with the other council and bickering with them, causing him to lose respect for them. This of course rubbed off on Veronica, and as seen in game she is not afraid to challenge her elders nor her superiors if she disagrees with them. During this time Veronica also fell in love with a knight by the name of Christine Royce. When initially asked about Christine, this is what Veronica has to say. Ever been nosy? I was, once. We were pretty young, but I like to think it was love. She left the Brotherhood, wanted to put some distance between herself and her parents. Since our membership isn't open to outsiders, some members think that obligates all of us to procreate. You can guess which camp her parents belong to. No, couldn't bring myself to leave everyone else behind. Couldn't convince her to stay, either. I'd hoped love would be enough to influence her decision, but it wasn't. We were both too stubborn. I don't know where she is now, but... I'm sure she's moved on. I still think about her though, once in a while. Like Veronica said, the pair were forced to break up due to pressure from other Brotherhood members as well as Christine's parents. All of that was too much for Christine, so she chose to leave despite Veronica pleading with her to stay. Clearly Veronica still cares about Christine since she admits to still thinking of her, but it seems like the way they were forced to end things forces Veronica to carry a lot of bitterness judging by her tone. Following Christine leaving the Brotherhood and the Mojave, she joined up with the Circle of Steel in order to get a fresh start in life away from the pressure of where she'd come from. Secretly though, this is Elijah's desire as he did not want the two to be together and help pull them apart. Back on to Veronica though. Elijah had become a problem for the Elder Council and so they promoted him out of the way and assigned them to investigate the Hoover Dam in Nevada. Here he planned on founding a new Brotherhood chapter under the noses of the Council and they tricked him into approving the assignment. They also asked Veronica to join him which she happily agreed to. But when Elijah's obsession with Helios 1 sidetracked the chapter, she started to have doubts about her foster father. She began to see his flaws creep out over time as he began to hide things from her, despite her usually being his trusted confidant. The main stickler for her was that he did not share why they were looking for certain pieces of technology or what they'll even be used for. Perhaps the defining moment for her characterisation of Elijah came in 2274 when the NCR took control of the Hoover Dam. This caused the Elder to fly into a rage, calling the NCR children playing with a bomb. This made Veronica realise he was more angry about the fact that he was denied the power that came with wielding the dam rather than what they could have done with it. This is perhaps an early sign of the Elijah the Courier would encounter in the Sierra Madre, one mad with his lust for control and power. Perhaps the defining moment for a characterisation of Elijah came in 2274. It was by his request, actually. He cleared it with the other elders. Somehow. They sent him to look into the dam. There was a time when I'd have begged to follow. Watch him at work. He did. For years, he fought with the council, taught me to question our direction. Meanwhile, he'd become more out of touch than all of them. On our way east, he demanded we stop at Helios 1 to examine it. While we were there, we received word that the NCR had taken the dam. He was furious. Called it children playing with a bomb, but he was mad because we'd lost his power. What we'd use it for? He didn't even care. Yeah, I did. I couldn't help him. He just didn't listen, and the idea that people talk back to him. <sighs> if he could have made the Brotherhood act like machines, ordering them around with the push of a button, he would have. They're cautious. When they discover something, they respect it, learn its limits, consider how to preserve it. Used to drive Father Elijah crazy. 
He liked to learn limits too, but only so he could push them. That's not to excuse the other elders, though. They all covet technology for its own sake. Some are just more fanatical than others. Despite her concerns over Elijah, there was little she could actually do. She was still a young scribe and had to watch as Elijah plunged the chapter into another war of the NCR. Over the next two years, the Brotherhood under Elijah fought a guerrilla war with the NCR during Operation Sunburst, losing more than half of its members. But of course, luckily, Veronica managed to survive. During the fierce battle of Helios 1, Father Elijah disappeared in the midst of the fighting. This left the Brotherhood in disarray until a paladin by the name of Nolan McNamara was able to rally the Brotherhood forces. Following this, he punched a hole through the NCR lines where he was able to get the survivors of the incredibly fearic battle to safety. It's not actually known why Elijah abandoned the Brotherhood at the Battle of Helios 1, but this is what Veronica has to say about it. I don't know. Last time anyone saw him was in the battle at Helios 1. I wasn't there. He gave orders to hold the plant until he could be reactivated. But he ran out of time. The NCR overran it. Everyone thought he was dead. But I got a note from him at a comm station. That's how he liked to talk, even to me. He wasn't good at face-to-face. -face. It was... strange. Even for Father Elijah. He's always been unstable, but this was something else. I don't want to say delusional, but I don't know what else to call it. The only thing familiar about it was the signature. He said the Brotherhood was doomed, but that he'd return, save us. But the way he said it, I don't know. Said he'd return with one of the greatest treasures of the old world, make the Mojave like it was meant to be. Wipe the slate clean. Due to Elijah abandoning the chapter, this obviously left them in a very, very precarious position. The NCR was hunting them down and their numbers were rapidly thinning, so following their survival, McNamara would become the new head of the Mojave chapter and brought the chapter into a lockdown state in the Hidden Valley Bunker. This was in order to protect themselves from the NCR and other outside threats that want the Brotherhood gone. It would also allow the chapter a brief period of respite in order for them to regather their strength. As keeping with her disdain for authority and her outspokenness, she began to question McNamara's decision to lock the chapter down. This made the leadership uncomfortable due to her difficult questions, coupled with her respected status as a veteran of Helios 1. So in order to shut Veronica up, the leadership assigned her as a procurement specialist. This allowed her to go outside the bunker regularly to make supply runs for food and other essentials to keep the chapter afloat. This frustrated her as she got along well with her peers outside of politics and now she's basically been kicked out and spent most of her time away from her friends and basically family at this point to be honest. Although the Elder's plan worked to a degree, it did little to curb Veronica's attitude, as due to her furthered exposure to the outside world, she became more aware of the Brotherhood's shortcomings. She saw the bustling settlements of traders and the inflow of NCR troopers. It made her realise the Brotherhood was outdated in its philosophy. The Brotherhood had one goal, to seize technology in order to prevent another great war. This single-minded goal which the Brotherhood ran headfirst towards would be its undoing, she believed. It only resulted in stagnation and weakened the Brotherhood while the rivals like the NCR had forged a nation from nothing. They had a standing army and controlled the Mojave while the Brotherhood was stuck in a cramped bunker feeling, fearing for their lives. Yet it still refused to change from its dogma and help the wasteland rather than themselves. It made her frustrated that the others couldn't see this. She didn't have to be a genius to figure out that if the Brotherhood kept heading this way, they would certainly be doomed. They were running out of members fast, and no amount of laser rifles or power armor could save them if they ran out of brothers and sisters to fight. All she could foresee was watching the slow death of the Order which she held so close to her heart as her friends slowly sputtered out over time. By the start of New Vegas, Veronica is at her wit's end. Her loyalties are constantly tested and torn between standing by her friends and fighting alongside them, and her unwillingness to jump onto the funeral pyre with them. Our solution to this is compiling information on all the various cultures and civilizations across the Waste. She prays that here she can find a sliver of hope for the Brotherhood which she cared so deeply about. Unfortunately though, the Brotherhood will not budge. Veronica edges closer to outright banishment every step she takes forward on her quest to reform, and even Elder McNamara will not move in his ideals despite being one of the more progressive members of the chapter. Now on to Veronica and Fallout New Vegas itself. Veronica can be found at the 188 trading post located along the intersection between the Highway 95 and 93. It's a small little outpost with little to actually do. There's a vendor and of course Veronica herself, dressed in unassuming rags, standing alone as she often had to do as of recent. Veronica has two quests associated with her. These are I could make you care and you make me feel like a woman. Firstly is you could make me feel like a woman. This is an unmarked quest that can be triggered by asking Veronica what her goals are, to which she responds that she would love a dress. I want... 
a dress. Yeah, a good one. Something elegant and classy, you know? But still stylish. Something that's eye-catching and sexy, but also says, don't fuck with me. I keep hoping I'll come across some old world designer gown when I'm scavenging, but it never happens. Maybe I should move back to California. Hey, you try getting a date wearing scribe robes. Might as well be wearing sweatpants. I just like them, you know? They make you feel like a woman. Those ladies before the war, they knew what they were doing. In order to complete the quest, you need to obtain a formal dress which you can get from the Ultralux off of the corpse of a White Glove Society member. To do this though, you need to kill one. The easiest way to do this is by talking to Het Gunderson at the bar. This triggers his quest where you need to uncover the disappearance of his son. Should you follow along the quest, you'll eventually be taken to a room where there will be a dead investigator. Here you'll be jumped by White Glove Society members where you can kill them and retrieve the dress. Once you do this, Veronica has quite a wholesome reaction, and with that is the end of the quest. It's quite simple but still enjoyable enough if you go through the Ultralux quest line since it's a great quest on its own. Ah, for me? Do you mean it? No, no, it's too much. Well, okay, but it's too much. Oh, it's perfect. Thank you. Thank you. I... I, I wish I had something to give you. I... Wait! What about punching? That's the gift that keeps on giving. I could work on your punching with you, if you like. Show you how to counter like a scribe. All right, put him up. Let's see what you got. The next quest is I Could Make You Care. In order to trigger this quest, you need to take Veronica to locations such as Nellis Air Force Base, Camp McCarran, and Cottonwood Cove. Here she'll talk to the courier about her feelings regarding the Brotherhood and how seeing these cultures have made her realise that perhaps the Brotherhood isn't doomed, it's just making incredibly poor choices. From here she'll ask you to take her to Hidden Valley, where she'll talk to Elder McNamara or Hardin should you replace them. But I'm going to be talking about the quest in the context of the choices I make, but I'll link the quest wiki if you want to have a look at the other endings. After speaking to the Elder, you'll be confronted by a group of paladins. Hello, Veronica. How goes your mission? We'll know in a second. I wanted to talk to you. Veronica, tell me this isn't about... Yes, goddammit, it is. But you're gonna hear me out this time. We've been through this. The things I've seen now, other groups succeeding where we fail, it's not too late for us. We've outlasted the end of the world. We'll outlast these upstarts. Waiting in a hole for everyone else to die. If we must. This is a dead end for us. I see no evidence of that. Nor do I see anyone out there with a solution to our problems. How could you? You're too scared to look. Let's go. We're wasting our time. I'd slap him around, but he stood at my parents' wedding. Plus, he used to make excuses to get me out of my punishment when I'd slept through head scribe Taggart's lectures. Figure I owe him for that. <sighs> he means well. No, but it does make it easier to forgive him. He's just misguided. It's not too late to change his mind. He's a stubborn old man, but when it comes down to it, he's got our best interests at heart. If he sees some indisputable sign we're on the wrong course, he won't ignore it. I don't know. I don't know. We need something that shows the Brotherhood will fail, or that it can do better a different way. The only thing that gets his attention is technology. Huh. Maybe Father Elijah had the right idea. That's my question to the Elder. All these years, the Brotherhood has collected weapons technology. And for what? To keep it out of people's hands? That clearly hasn't worked. To defend ourselves? We can't compete with the NCR's numbers, or the Legion's. We're fighting a war for a lost cause. If we're going to survive, we have to find a role in society, attract new members. Look at the followers of the apocalypse. They use their expertise to improve people's lives. They train them to be self-sufficient. That expertise cultivates respect and gratitude, spreads their ideals, draws talent to their cause. They make friends like we make enemies. But they don't know a fraction of what we know. If we took on their role, we could stand up to anyone. We wouldn't have to hide. Our elder before McNamara, he had a nose for recovering lost technology. He'd send scribes out into the desert chasing whatever leads he found. 
There were a few he only trusted me with. I can think of at least one that'd prove my point, if it still exists. There's a comm terminal not too far from here I'd use to access messages from him. If we go there, I can pull up his research on it. What is this? Veronica brings an outsider into our home, then has a private audience with the Elder? The two of you may have the Elder fooled, but we know better. Veronica has always twisted the Founder's principles to her own ends. We will not stand idly by and allow her to corrupt our Elder's thinking. Sorry about that. Just because I Farming technology, she puts it. The Euclid Sea Finder or the Pulse Gun. I went with the farming technology here. This will take you to Vault 21 where you need to get a terminal which contains research data on crops which will grow in the wasteland. From here you must return to Hidden Valley to present your findings. Veronica, I hope- I brought you a present. This disc has secrets to breeding plants that can thrive in the wasteland. High Elder Maxon didn't found us to be botanists, Veronica. Think about it. No more trading guns for food. Total self-sufficiency. It's what we always wanted. This won't get us Hoover Dam. Yes, it will. If we feed people, they'll support us. They'll join us. What does the Codex say? A bunch of closed-minded bullshit. We do not help them or let them in. But... We keep knowledge they must never have. Give it a chance. For me. I can't stay here and watch us waste away. I'm sorry. We'll die out. I know. Come on. I can't listen to this anymore. He wouldn't listen. The truth was right there staring him in the face. How could he not listen? I see that now. I thought I knew him better than that, but it was like talking to a stranger. How can I help them when they won't accept it? It wouldn't matter. The Elder has final say. The hell of it is he's one of our most progressive members. If I can't get him to agree, it's hopeless. I... I don't know if I can stay. Maybe it'd be better for everyone if I left. Spent my life... somewhere else. Work with the followers of the Apocalypse, maybe. Put my knowledge to some good use. Or I can stay here for the people I care about and do whatever I can until it comes to a slow or sudden end. They may be a bunch of wooden conformists, but anything I did without them would feel empty. I'd always be reminded of this day, how I wasn't strong enough to stand by them. So I guess I'll stay. Won't be easy, but at least I won't feel guilty about the choice. Let's get going. I'd like to get my mind off all this, and some fresh air would do me some good, right about now. However, as you can see, the Elder froze into Veronica's face, refusing to listen to reason at all. This hurts Veronica and she questions whether or not she should stay. This is down to the player. Personally, I chose to keep her in the Brotherhood since I'm basic like that and love the Brotherhood. After this, she asks for some fresh air. Once on the surface, the same group of paladins from earlier confront the courier and Veronica. This confrontation can either end in you attacking them, which will estrange Veronica from you and make her hate you, you can get them to attack you, which she won't hate you for, and the one I did where I passed a speech check and ended the confrontation peacefully. Once they leave, the player can ask if she changes her mind or you can simply leave, which is what I did. If you keep her in the Brotherhood, you receive her Brotherhood specific per- We heard Veronica talking with the Elder. We won't stand for this. Hmm. She'd be doing a greater service by carrying out her duties and not trying to undermine the Elder's authority. This had better be the last time her loyalty falters. You've been warned. God. I should get used to this, I guess. People get desperate. They turn on each other. First thing to go is trust. I don't think it's ever going to be the same for me in there. Knowing no matter what I do, it's going to end badly. But they're all I have. Good idea. 
That's all for Veronica though, definitely one of the better companions in Fallout in Vegas in my opinion. This was a bit of a longer video because I decided to put clips from the game in. I'm not sure if I'll keep doing that but we'll see. Anyways that's all, see you in the next one.